Today is the 16th of July and I'm showing you this great big Japanese black pine. This is one of the original trees from my collection which I purchased back in 1974-75. It was imported from Japan by one of the first importers in the UK called Bromage and Young and it was owned by the one of the directors of the company, Norman Grispeed. Uh, so this was in 1962 when they imported it. And then Norman Grispeed sold it on to the president or the chairman of the British Bonsai Association, a guy called Cal Humphrey. And he sold it on to me in, I think, 74, 75. And I've had it ever since. I've grown it over the years. It wasn't as big as this. The trunk must have been half the thickness. But in all the years that I've had it, which is oh, a lot of years, working back, it must be now well over, I would say, 40 years. It's grown a lot and the lower branches have died. I think I may have mentioned it in another short video of it. These were the original branches, but because I wanted to grow it into a bigger tree, the higher, taller branches have grown very strong. So here it is. This is the back side. The tree leans that way. So I think it makes sense that this is the front. Very difficult to have any other front. So this is the new front. And I've been growing it in this great big basket to let air in. And there's a lot of moss in here to make it strong. So it's grown really strong. So the first thing I want to do now that the tree is so strong is to remove the candles. I don't always remove the candles straight away because the longer you leave the candles, the stronger you make the tree. Now that the tree is quite strong, I will simply remove virtually all the candles that I don't need. So you can see these are all very long candles, just very roughly. I do remove the candles from time to time. Over the last few years I've been doing that, but I do let them grow for a while just to strengthen the tree. Look at it, it's so vigorous. All this has grown in this year. So I don't need all of it. So let's remove the big ones. And when we come to styling the tree, we will consider what other candles to remove. I always have to bear in mind that what people do in Japan does not always work when we work on the same species in Western Europe because our climate is different. They have a really wet, warm growing season, which we don't have. We have a warm season, not as hot, about 25 degrees, occasionally in the 30s for one or two days. And of course, it's very, very dry in the summer. So all these long candles which have strengthened the tree, so it served its purpose. The long candles have really made the tree strong. Look at it, it's so vigorous, really vigorous. Now the big job in hand is to start styling the tree. So if we come closer, we will have a look and see how the tree has back budded quite a bit. You can see all the back budding here. All these new shoots have come. So this has come from growing it strong. So there's no problem with back budding. I can then remove a lot of the candles and then proceed to wire the tree. So as I say, this is the front and then we will carefully choose the bits to remove. So we will begin by doing some wiring. So the next stage is to do some wiring and then we will proceed step by step working from the top all the way uh, to the apex here. So the first bit of wiring I'm going to do is this right hand branch and as you can see there are a lot of subsidiary branches growing out. So we're going to wire these together, always in pairs, 
and the wire I'm going to use for these branches is four millimeter Japanese aluminum wire so we're going to select the pairs to wire I'm just going to show you most trees when they don't get light branches die so you do get some die back of the branches this is a dead branch so we'll have to deal with this but no need to worry because you get new branches which will replace it so this is another day and you know it's another day because I've got another shirt on but before I talk about the pine I should just mention this lovely Hawaiian shirt for those of you who are from Hawaii Aloha and this is a genuine Hawaiian shirt from the United States of America and one of our colleagues very kindly uh, sent for this shirt and presented it to me as a su surprise and it's the proper thing no cheap stuff from uh, I won't mention which countries, but they were nice shirts, but this is the very best I've had so far. So there you are, you can comment on the shirt if you wish, but the more serious job on hand is this famous black pine of mine. I have done some work, I showed you the other day, I started doing work and I started by pruning all these candles off and I've done some very basic wiring and I've done the wiring mainly to lower bra the branches a little bit and I've cleared some of the debris, some of the dead branches and now I've got some very major decisions to make. There are still quite a lot of faults on this tree and you must be wondering why I let this tree uh, go a bit uncontrolled. There is a good reason for it. I don't always keep all the trees in perfect condition because if you keep pruning it and taking all the leaves off and all the candles off, the tree gets progressively weaker. And the very fact that I've planted it in this basket with a lot of moss in it is to make the tree recover and grow strong. And it has certainly become very strong. So once it becomes strong, I will start shaping it again. So they produced a lot of branches. If I show you the back, you see how dense the back is. The back is really, really dense. And it's a gen genuine old tree. And you can see that the fissured bark on the trunk shows its real age. So this is some of the detail. But I wanted to point out what a lot of subs subsidiary branches have grown here. It is so, so dense that I will have to deal with this. And of course, when you have a lot of branches, then you have a lot of choice. If you didn't have a lot of branches, then you would be in, in trouble. So it's nice to have these branches because I can now do exactly what I want. If I can just explain what is happening here. If you look closely here, there are lots and lots of branches. This is the main branch coming out, and these are the secondary branches which make the pad. But even this main one has come out of one branch, so that back branch has bifurcated into two branches, and each of them are like pads in their own right. So this one here is very, very dense, but if you look at the overall shape of the tree, I don't think I need this long branch here. It served its purpose. I can probably use these subsidiary branches to create the effect I need. So I'm going to do something quite major, and that is to get rid of this one. So I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to cut this off. As I've always said, you've got to be bold. So I've cut those off and I'm going to wire these two to produce the pads that I will eventually need. I've taken all those candles off because they were very strong and I know that it will now bud back. By doing that, 
I can now wire these two subsidiary ones, which are really part of the pad. So I'll wire these two to create the pad. Some of these upward pointing ones I can get rid of. Bonsai apprentices working under the masters, they just sit in the workshop. They sit from maybe 6 in the morning till about 11 at night, just constantly wiring. That's why they're so good. Right, I've now wired these two branches. Remember I cut that long one off. This was a very long, strong branch that we got rid of. We got rid of all that from here. We got rid of that, so the main protruding one we took off and we're using the two subsidiary ones to form that side of the branch. Now I have a similar situation here now this is okay, I'll probably just wire this down and see how it goes. And of course it can always bud back and once it buds back we can then gradually reduce it. I don't like doing things too drastically because sometimes in demonstrations people do drastic things but they never tell you whether the trees from the demonstration survives or not. should always step back to get an overall impression of what you're doing. And when I look at this tree, there is another fault in this tree. This branch here, when you look at it in its entirety, it forms a nice top and it forms like a natural leader. Remember that this tree was only that short, so this last 30 to 40 centimeters has grown in the last, I would say, maybe 15 or 20 years. I've added height to the tree, and that's why I lost these lower branches. Technically speaking, this whole new branch can go, and if it went, you can still get quite a nice crown but I'm very reluctant to remove it because it still gives a very good overall impression to the tree. So I'm inclined to leave it. So I wouldn't do much more than that to it. I know I can pluck a lot of branches and make all the br branches look up, but I don't want to weaken the tree. I know there are many things you could do, and a lot of people will criticize me and say that, oh, you should have done this and you should have done that. The tree doesn't look so nice, but I like to do the wiring in stages. I don't want to put too much pressure on the tree. So I might do that to the tree and see what it looks like and bring that down so that it doesn't grow much taller. I might just do a bit of that. I won't do anything too drastic and then make that the leader. So we're going to train it this way. This 
sometimes rather than do a very tight bend with the wire, you can also just do like an open coil to guide the branch along. Well, we're, don't forget we're not wiring this for an exhibition, we're just wiring it for training. So rather than distress the tree, we will just guide the branches along. I should emphasize that when you're wiring a tree for an exhibition, that's a completely different exercise to what I'm doing here. So I've made this bend like that and that, that's the leader. So I've given it an extra twist over there. So this is all I will do with this tree for the moment. It's still looking quite good. And then maybe in a Nadia's year's time, I will bend more of these branches back. Some of these can be bent back. I can do a bit of that wiring as well. So sometimes if you don't want to wire, I will just show you some other techniques to bend branches. And that is simply by using guy wires. The ancient Chinese always used to use guy wires. So rather than just apply wires, you can simply, just to show you the principle, you can simply pull the branch down this way, like that, with wires. So it's less drastic than applying wire. I know you can't get very precise bends to it, you can't do zigzags to it, but at least you can make the branch hang down. So what I've done is rather than tie it to the branch, I've tied it to the thick wire and I've used this growing box as one of the anchor points. So by pulling it down, can you see the effect? By pulling it with wire, you can get the branch to go down and then this end I can then just do this and to protect the branch if you were wanting to put it on a branch as I said you can use these bits of you know plastic pipe and then protect the bark with it or you can use an ordinary hose pipe put it on there so that the wire won't mark it. Pull it down however much you want. And then you can tension it in whatever you way you want so you can get that effect. I've had a lot of people over the years, when you think I've had this since 1974, and I must have had about 20 or 30 offers to buy this tree. But there are some trees I am reluctant to sell and this may be one of them. It's like an old friend, so I've kept this. So this is, so this zigzag curve, which I've been trained for a very, very long time. So when you think I've owned it for more than 45 years, I suppose, and it's only taken a little bit, grown a little taller. So I would say this tree is certainly approaching a hundred years. I think I will now keep it that height. Don't let anything more grow from there. And this is as far as I've got. It is by no means in its exhibition condition, but at least I'm showing you progressively how this tree has developed and it's one of my very favorite trees. And there you are. Black pines are very easy to grow and to train. We have a lot of black pines on the nursery. I think I've shown you one or two videos, 
but this is a very special one. Thank you.